Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. We hear this today in our second reading from St. Paul to the Romans, and that should make us kind of perk up our ears a little bit. Okay, we want to fulfill the law. How do we do this? It's by loving one another. But the question has to be, and it's a very big question, is, well, what is love? You know, St. Paul, a little bit later in Romans, even, even says at the end of our second reading, love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is fulfillment of the law. So love does not bring evil to the neighbor. It still is that question of, well, what, what, is, what is love? You know, whenever I hear that, by the way, I'm not going to lie. I go back to 1993, and probably more importantly, 1996, with the SNL skit of What is Love? That's right, maybe it's stuck in your head now. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Yeah. But that's what love is not supposed to do. It's not meant to hurt you. But we're called to love one another. So maybe we leave that song behind by Hathaway. We go to someone maybe a little bit more profound. Let's go to St. Thomas Aquinas and his definition on love, which is very simple, but so true. And by the way, there's different types of love. We know this. There's agape, there's philia, there's eros, there's different ways. But I love, as love, Aquinas' definition of love, essentially it says this. Love is willing the good of the other. Love is willing the good, which is opposite of evil, the good of the other. And we can add on, as he does in another place, not for your own personal gain. So it's not, I'm going to love you so that you in return love me. I'm going to love you so that I get something out of you. That's not what love is. Love is willing the good of the other. And what does that look like? Well, we all know that love can be hard. Why? Because if we truly love someone, then we want them to live in the goodness of the Lord. And if we see that they are in error, if they are in sin, if they are in evil, out of love for them, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, we must will the good for them and sometimes even help them to see the goodness. Of course, we hear about this in our gospel today, this famous passage from Matthew 18, where it's kind of based off of, we know, like fraternal correction. Now, we want to put this in context, by the way. Who is Matthew? Well, who is Jesus speaking to here? In Matthew 18, he's only speaking to uh, the apostles, essentially. So it's not a sermon amount. Instead, it's his closest followers. It's the apostles, essentially the first bishops of the church. That's why later in this passage of the gospel, we hear, whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth should be loosed in heaven. Not just given to Peter, but the apostles. That's also why he says, wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name. Right? And that's to the, to the apostles. So that's an important context. But this fraternal correction we can use for ourselves as well, especially when it comes to love. Let's take a look at this. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell everyone else but him what he did wrong. Oh, it doesn't say that? I thought that's what society said we're supposed to do. Can you believe that Mrs. McGillicuddy did this to me? She was so mean to me. She yelled at me after my homily. It was horrible. No, that's not what it says. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Oh, this is hard, isn't it? Someone sins against you. Or someone is in sin. And someone is an evil. And now we have to go 
correct them. I'd like to re re reuse that word instead of correct. Now we have to go and love them. I hope you see the difference. Love is willing the good of the other. And there is a difference between good and evil. There is a right, there, there is a wrong. Once again, society will tell us so often, you do you, and that's just fine. We know that's not true. If you do you lead you away from God, it's not fine. It's wrong. And out of love, we are called to help, especially those who we are close to, to come back into the goodness of the Lord. Loving them. Helping them for their own good instead of evil. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established. This actually comes from the Old Testament. And what does this mean that we now have, we have proof? Hey, you, you are in, in wrong here. You are in evil. You are in sin. We're not here to, to bash you. We're not here to gossip about you. We're here to encourage you to come back to grace, to the goodness of the Lord. If he still refuses to listen to the two or three of you, now Jesus is speaking to the disciples, most importantly, and then you bring it to the church, call that a, the assembly of believers. If he refuses to listen to them as well, then you treat him as a Gentile or a tax collector. What does that mean? Well, if someone is in, in, that, in that grave center where they separate themselves from the church, that means they're excommunicated. But even then, there's still hope for them. Because who does Jesus minister to? He ministers to the Gentiles. He ministers to the tax collectors. I think the more important part to, to hear today once again is that when we offer any sort of fraternal correction, it's kind of known as that fraternal love. And it's the same when it happens to us. You may be thinking to yourself, well, Father, that's other people's responsibility. Well, let's go back to our first reading today. Let's go back to the prophet Ezekiel. Essentially, I'm going to paraphrase him. He says, though, when you, if, a, if I tell you, a wicked one, uh, that if you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, for his evil but I'll hold you responsible for his death. But if you do speak out, if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. So it's not just we take care of ourself, because that's not what love is. Love is also what, as we heard in the second reading, Love your neighbor as yourself. And in doing so, to love one another is the fulfillment of the law. To will the good of the other, to encourage them on the right path, to encourage them to the Lord, that's what love... Let me use an example, quick example. And I know I've used it uh, before. You know, we all have friends, we all have people we can hang out with, and that's a very good thing. But I heard one time, a true friend doesn't only go to the bar with you. A true friend will tell you sometimes, if it's true, that you're going to the bar too much. Do you see the difference there? Hey, I, I think you have a, an ordinate attachment to alcohol. Or I think you have an inordinate attachment and you're spending not enough time with your family, you're spending too much time here at the bar. It's an example of someone who's trying to what? Not to bash the person, but to love them. And so for our own life, we have to say, Lord, give me, yes, the courage of love, also the same virtue of prudence, by the way. That's very important that we do this in a way that's, that's prudent, especially for those who the Lord has put in our life. 
And we also open ourselves up to the Lord and say, Lord, help my neighbors to love me, to correct me. That if Mrs. McGillity, if I've offended her in any way, that she may correct me. I've had that happen a couple times here, actually. It's been very, very humbling. Where parishioners have come in and, and told me, probably more than a couple times, actually, hey, Father, I just want to let you know, like, you really hurt me. And I'm so grateful that they told me that. That maybe I, I, they perceived, and maybe I did, probably I did, I sinned against them. But that was actually them loving me. It's hard to receive fraternal love. It's hard to give it. That's what God asks us to do. Why? Because it's helping each other. And it's willing the good of the other. And that's what it means to love one another as ourselves.